Hey guys, what is up? This is Cody, or x Cody. How's it going today? Before the video starts, I just want to say I got a haircut, and to not be so hard on me, okay? It's pretty short. I'm gonna take off the hat. Did you really think I got a haircut? Did you really- did you actually think so? That was a lot lamer than I had it in my mind, but either way, the second night of the trilogy of life stories of sleeping in my school for three days. If you haven't seen the first video, there'll be a link in the description and a card I think up, no, up there, right? Pretty sure it's up there. And also, how's it going today? Thank you for spending the time out of your day to click on my video. Hopefully you'll enjoy. So very brief recap on the last story. There was a huge nor'easter in 2011 in my state that I live in, Connecticut. The power was out for a solid two weeks and my high school was like a shelter for everybody who didn't have heat. I went there with a couple friends. We ended up meeting up with a bunch of other people there. It was awesome. It was a great time, a lot of crazy stuff happened. And the second night was definitely the craziest. This is when the most stuff happened, and a lot of people have been asking me to go back on this story and tell it again. I think I made this video back in like 2015 or something, so this is like an old story, so this is, this is gonna be fun. And real quick before we get into that, I'd like to say today's video is sponsored by me. Okay, my merch store, xcode.com slash shop go check out the merch and uh support the channel thank you so on the second day a bunch of other people that i went to high school with showed up it was almost like the word had spread everybody was having fun at the school there's nothing else to do during this period of time all the roads were really closed you couldn't really go to anything all the businesses were closed so the word kind of spread around and on the second day there was probably five or six friends that we were just walking around aimlessly lapping around the school like we did during school Really nothing special. But on the second night, the sun went down and the mischief began. I remember there was a very pivotal part, a very pivotal part in this, in this night, when we realized something. That because the electricity wasn't on, only the emergency lights, I think the cafeteria, maybe the, maybe the stoves and the fridges were still on, that kind of stuff. I really hope so, because I think I got food poisoning day one. That was not very fun. At all. Not very fun. Since there wasn't any power to the school and only the emergency lights and stuff like that were on, that the cameras to the school were also not on. So as soon as my friend told me this, as soon as we, as soon as we realized that the cameras went on to the school, I didn't really think anything of it, but they, they had, they had that scheming mindset. They had that, that, you could just see it in their face. They were just thinking of things to do that they never were able to do because of the cameras. And then I look at one of my friends and his eyes get all wide and he's like, yo, I know what we can do. It's like this, this magical idea just came onto him. He was as excited as Nicolas Cage finding another clue in the national treasure. He tells everybody to follow him. We walk around the school, we go to the other side of it, and we go right to the school store. It's locked. But there's no lights on inside, it looks like a ghost town in there. And he looks back to us and he's like, alright, who's got an extra credit card? Who's got a gift card? Something. We're looking through our pockets. I don't have shit, because I was broke then, alright? Give me a break. I was like 14 or something. Everybody's looking through their pockets and couldn't find anything. Absolutely nothing to do with a credit card, because we're all super young. The dude's like standing at the door, looking through his own pockets. He whips out his school ID. The, the card, you get a picture taken and a couple months later you get a school ID. He whips out his school ID and he's like, all right, I got fuck it, I'll just use this. He didn't care at all. And out of nowhere he turned into Bear grills and starts like bending it all sorts of different ways to like make like a cutout. I'm not going to give you a tutorial on how to break into a door, okay? He basically turned this school ID into a mechanism to like put inside the door and then like unhitch the, the lock so the door would just open. He destroys his school ID, puts it through the little thing in the door, it just opens right up like he had done it a million times. And at that point, I was like nervous. I was like freaking out in my mind. My heart was racing. I was looking all around. There's nobody in the hallways. It's all like super dark and like really creepy, straight up like a horror movie. I know I said it in the first story, but I'm gonna reiterate it because it was like, it's so creepy walking through your school at night. They start to go in, I see them looking through all the shelves and all the stuff, and I'm just like kind of sitting back like, oh shit, should I be doing this right now? Like, oh. And then I see this dude take his hands and he puts them down into this shelf and then lifts it back up. It's just a pile of chips. It's like my favorite kind of chips too. Lay's baked barbecue, fire. And I'm like, oh shit, I want some chips. I go in there, they're like stealing all the shirts and stuff off the shelves. And you know me, listen, I was a little nervous. I just took one bag of chips, all right? One bag of chips for the personal, you know? They're, they're, they're straight up robbing this store. They're taking everything, all the candy, Twizzlers, Skittles, Sour Patch Kids. They're taking them all, dude, shoving their pockets full. 
I'm just sitting there with my one bag of chips. I remember it got to a point where they just kind of like threw the shirts because they realized they didn't want a bunch of shirts with my high school name on them. And they had to have more room for candy, okay? That there wasn't enough shirt to candy ratio in their hands. They had to have more candy. So after we plundered the school store, the moment we walked out of the store, I'm, I'm looking all around. Like you, every time I did something remotely sketchy back then, even now, honestly, I just, I can't get away with crime now, truly. Not that I go and try for it, okay? I'm just, I, I'm, I'm super nervous about getting caught and going to jail. I'm like looking all around and I, I look over and I see one of the janitors that's walking around with a mop bucket. He's like, half opening the door. He sees us all just like kind of walking out of the school store, all sketchy, pockets full. One of my friends is like already eating the candy and he's just like, hey. And then we just fucking book it. We just, we just run like hell all the way to the other side of the school, up the staircase. We ended up on the top level and we just sat there and ate the candy. We got away with it, okay? There was no, there was no cameras. There was no proof. I felt like a true badass, okay? Scumbag X code A at its finest right there. I really wonder if the janitor actually went back and told the supervisor or told the principal or whoever was there at the time. Or if he just wanted some free candy. You know, either way. So after we ate a bunch of candy, we're walking around the school again trying to figure out things to do. And the dude that made the card, he was thinking to himself, we got into that door, let's try all the other doors. So we're going up to like every, every like teacher door and like trying to trying to get the card in there but it's like a completely different lock so it didn't work at all we're just like kind of making laps trying to get into classrooms i i don't know i don't even know why we're trying to get into classrooms at this point i was just kind of there i had nothing else to do we were just kind of just really bored we're going up and down the hallways trying to see if any of the doors are unlocked and we go <laughs> I'm only laughing because of the, the one classroom that was open. The one teacher that happened to leave his door just completely unlocked was one of the stupidest teachers in the whole school. Like, everybody would make fun of him because he was so dumb. Like, he was so dumb to the point where, like, nobody really even knew why he was employed at this school. So we go into this classroom. I'm, like, really scared at this point. The automatic lights turn on and everything. And, like, like oh, shit, oh, shit, we're looking around. There's nobody. It's It's, like... Probably 9, 10 o'clock at night, everybody's almost, everybody's basically sleeping in the school, so it was basically a ghost town. We get into this classroom, and I'm just kind of standing there. I'm not really doing anything, I'm just kind of like watching every, everybody go through everything. They're going through the teacher's desk. This dude finds video cameras up in the closet. He starts taking them out like, dude, we hit the jackpot. And I'm sitting there like, what the fuck have I gotten myself into? Holy shit. And now at the same time as he's putting these video cameras on the desk, going back for more, the dude going through the teacher's desk finds a key. And it doesn't look like a normal key, it's just like a, a weird looking key. And he's just like, yo, look what I found. What do you think this is to? And like, we're trying it on all this, all everything with a lock in the room, it's not working. And he's just like, ah, oh, fuck it. And I guess he put it in his pocket. And after that, we really didn't find anything cool in the, in the classroom. And everybody crowded around the desks where all these video cameras were sitting. And we kind of just like all agreed, like, this is pretty stupid. These video cameras are pretty old, number one. Number two, we, you know, we couldn't even get some money for them because they probably got, you know, the school like engraved into the side of the cameras. And let's not go to jail tonight. You know, like that was the general consensus. Like, let's... Let's not bring it this far. Let's not steal these from the school. So they put them back, they closed the closet, and we left the room. Now at this point, like I said, it was getting a little bit late. Half of the group kind of broke up. They went back with their families to go to sleep. And it was just me and three friends. And at this point, we're trying to find a spot to smoke weed. We're trying to find a spot to roll a joint. That was the first thing we had to do. We wanted to roll a joint and smoke weed. And now listen, listen. Walking around your high school with no cameras in the middle of the night, you could just roll up anywhere. So we just sat down in the hallway, rolling up some joints. It was, it felt so badass, man. Straight out of dazed and confused. Like I'm in no way saying for you to ever bring drugs to school. That is the dumbest thing you could probably ever do while you're in school. But in this specific scenario, it was pretty awesome. So we rolled up one or two joints and then we're trying to find a spot to smoke. We didn't want to smoke in the school. I had known that there was a couple people that were smoking weed like in the stairwells during this, but I didn't partake because there was cops walking around the school. Like I didn't want to go to jail. That's, that was not on my agenda uh, of, of staying in this high school. I, I didn't want to go to prison. There was already police there. 
It would have just been stupid. So here's where the story gets funny. So we're walking around outside of the high school. We walked out the doors. We, we put something in the door, like a wedge, so we could get back in easily without anybody knowing, just like normal school. Put like a pen in the door or something. And we're walking around the school and we get to around kind of the back of the school where all of the gym equipment is. And there's this ramp that goes up to this like railing area, which is a pretty cool spot. It's almost like a lookout over like the football fields and everything. It's a pretty chill spot to smoke, I'd say. So we get there, and like, we're getting the lighter out, we're, we're about to spark it, and my friend goes and sits on the golf cart that's just conveniently sitting there. And I'm like, oh shit, that's a pretty nice spot to sit down. So I sit down in the golf cart, and we're, you know, trying to spark the joint. It was a little windy at the time. And then my friend goes into his pocket, and he takes out the key, and he's like, yo, could you imagine if this is the key? He puts it in the golf cart, turns it, it just turns right on. And we all look, we're all looking at each other like, Holy shit, no fucking way. What are the chances of the one key we find in this fucking teacher's place, or the teacher's desk, is the key to the fucking golf cart to the school? The, the same golf cart, the security guard used to ride around and go, hey, hey, when he'd catch us going across the street. Holy shit, we were mind blown. This dude, where he throws it in reverse, he goes down the ramp. We ride over to the parking lot near the track field. I'm like really scared to even be on this thing. I'm like, me and my friend hop off and it's just the one dude who found the key. And he's like doing donuts in the parking lot because there's slush everywhere. It was making so much noise. It was like 10 or 11 o'clock at night at this point. And after doing donuts for a little bit, he stopped it, turned it off. And we all went and sat in the middle of the parking lot and smoked the joint. I got fucking stony baloney as usual, like I did in high school. I still get blazed as hell when I take one or two hits off a bowl, I'm fried. So as soon as the joint was done, the paranoia set in. I realized the situation that I was in. We had broken into a teacher's room, gone into their desk, stole the key out of it, <laughs> rolled up a joint in the hallway of the school, went into the golf cart, stole the golf cart, we're doing burnouts in the parking lot, and now we're smoking weed in the, in the golf cart, doing a, a burn ride in my school's golf cart. And the one thing that I would always do when I'd smoke weed when I was this young, I'd always be looking around, I'd always think the cops are coming, oh shit, oh shit. And I look to the front of the school, right at the main entrance, and I see the door open with a flashlight. Like I just see someone with a flashlight looking around like this, and I just freak the fuck out. I'm like, yo, 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 look, look, what is that, what is that? My friend looks over, and he's like, yo, that's a cop, that's a fucking cop, and my everybody fucking bugs out. We get out, we get out of the golf cart, my friend takes the key out, he fucking chucks it into the track field. Why? Why did he do this? I, I don't know. It's covered in snow, this track field, man. It's absolutely covered. This dude throws the key, and we just like kind of hide behind the golf cart and watch, watch the person with the, with the flashlight kind of go over, look through the first couple cars in the parking lot make a lap around, go up the ramp where the golf cart's supposed to be, and then just goes inside. Just just goes inside like it's it's no big deal. I don't even think they realized it was gone, but like, we, dude, I was freaking the fuck out. And now at this point, we have a golf cart parked sideways in the middle of the parking lot without the key. The key is fucking gone. So we go into the track field. There's like fucking two feet of snow. We got to trudge through. It's up to our fucking knees. And we're just scrambling all over, trying to find this fucking key that he threw. Luckily, I think the snow was a little bit lower in the actual track field, but the snow plow brought it up, like right to the beginning of it, so we had to get through the mountain of snow. We're sitting there with like lighters and shit, trying to light it up. It was, it was terrible. After like 20 minutes of looking through the snow, we actually found the key. It was miraculous, a fucking miracle that we found the key. But we found the key, and at that point, I was, I was done. I was pussying out. No time to go on the on the golf cart. Me and my friend made the person who took the golf cart bring it up in reverse back up to where it was. We, we followed him and everything, and I was terrified because we had to walk right past the main entrance of the school where the, I, I swear it was a police officer. I, I didn't really see like 100%, but who would be walking out there at the middle of the night with a flashlight? Like, it would look like a cop flashlight, so. You could decide for yourself what that was. So as soon as we got the golf cart back into place, I was a little bit relaxed. Like at that point, I was like, all right, we made it. We're all good. Nothing's ever going to happen. The cameras aren't even on to see us do that. We're all good. We're chilling. And at that point, it was getting real late. We're all stony baloney from the joint. So we decided to go back to our cots in the middle of the hallway and go to sleep for the night. That was beyond probably one of the craziest things I've ever done in my entire life. Don't be a jabroni like me. Make good decisions. Don't end your don't end up in prison. Don't end up in jail in juvie, depending on what age you are. It's it's just <laughs> I 
I, I honestly can't believe myself that you're not talking about this. This is just this is just borderline ridiculous. This, this is beyond ridiculous, actually. Smoking weed on my school's golf cart. What a banger, man. I remember when I made this video back in like 2014 or something, you know, when my channel was like just getting some views. I think I had around maybe 75,000 subscribers. I remember at the end of the commentary, I ended, like I pressed stopped on Audacity and I was like, that's a banger. Like that's, that's one of the best stories I ever told. And hopefully you guys enjoyed it. And, and especially the people who have already heard it, hopefully you guys enjoyed the revamp. It's been really fun going back and telling my old stories, especially the ones that I had to delete. And hopefully you guys are enjoy it. I know there's some of you guys that have kind of been negative about it, like, bro, ran out of stories, you know? Eh. Listen to me, man. I just want to go back and retell the stories. Like, the number one, one of the main reasons I was really sad about having to delete the videos, number one, like, 80 million views gone. That sucked. But the main reason is because I wanted to look back on these stories in 20, 30 years when I can't remember the details and be like, holy shit, look at how much of a stupid, dumbass kid I was. And it sucks that they're all gone, so, you know, it's cool to be able to remake them and have support from you guys, so I really appreciate you guys watching the videos and, you know, getting positive tweets and Snapchats and stuff like that about it. It, it really does make my day. And also, I want to say thank you to everybody who's been supporting me on Patreon. It means the world to me. Thank you for your support. It really helps me out for a dollar or two a month. You can support the channel and get access to the secret unlisted videos on my Patreon page. Link in the description for more information. Thank you for spending the time out of your day to watch my video. I really do appreciate it. Leave a like on the video if you guys enjoyed. Subscribe for more. Put the bell on so you get notified every time I upload. Have yourself a snazzy day. Stay high, stay lifted, and stay snazzy. Peace.